Okay, chapter 8, empirical formula. You're going to have a lot of problems, five of them, over your next uh, two finals in prep chem. So be ready for this. These are exercises 8C, 8D, and 8E. So what are we talking about with empirical formula? Well, empirical formula is the smallest counting number ratio of elements in a compound. The molecular formula is the actual counting number ratio of elements in a compound. So if we look at this molecule, C2H4, the smallest ratio is CH2, right? Divide both sides by two. That's the smallest ratio of carbons to hydrogens. And then if we look at this molecule, C8H16, that has the same empirical formula as this one because the smallest ratio is one carbon to two hydrogens. These would be the molecular formulas, but that would be the empirical formula. So how do we go about our business? How do we do these problems? Well, they're really very simple, repeatable method. So our procedure looks like this. You want to convert each element to moles. You'll be given data on each element asking you for what the empirical formula is, you want to convert them to moles. If we start with grams, or if you start with percentage, turn the percentage into grams. Because it's simpler that way, and if you have 67% of one element, and you had 100 grams of that element, then you'd have 67 grams of that element. So it's simple. If you see percentage, make it grams. And once you're at grams, you know how to get to moles. That's a periodic table. Okay. Once you're at moles, we want to do something called normalizing, which means you divide every mole for all the elements that you calculated and divide them by the smallest so that we set the smallest equal to 1 and then compare all the others. If, after you do that, everything is a counting number, in terms of the different elements and their moles, then you're done. But often that isn't the case. And if one of those numbers of moles ends in a number that's approximately 0.5, you want to multiply all the moles by 2 so that you can get it up to the next high, uh, ratio of counting numbers. If it ends in 0.33, you want to multiply all by 3. And if it ends in 0.25 or something close, multiply all by 4. It's a lot easier whenever we do it than to describe it, so let's do some. All right, I have three different problems here. This is one. If we start with 17.4 grams of sulfur and 17.3 grams of oxygen in a compound, what's its empirical formula? And then the other two problems are these. 69.9% iron and 30.1% oxygen. And then we've got a molecular formula problem. So hit pause, do all three of these problems. I'll go back. Okay, and then come back and we'll do them. Hit pause. All right, you're back. So this is an easy problem. It is no big deal, right? How do we go about taking care of this business? Well, 17.4 grams of sulfur, 17.3 grams of oxygen. We want to convert to moles. Since we're at grams, one mole of sulfur is 32 grams. One mole of oxygen is 16 grams. We just have to be in the neighborhood here. All right, that gives us values. Seventeen point four divided by thirty two is zero point five four four. Seventeen point three divided by sixteen is one point zero eight. Okay, that is the molar ratio. But we need counting number molar ratio, so we're going to normalize by dividing both or all by the smallest number of moles, so that we end up with one 
of one of the elements, and when we do that math, oxygens, basically that's one sulfur to two oxygens, and how do we write that formula? SO2. And we're done. That's it. That's all we have to do. Convert to moles, divide by the smallest, and then look at the ratio. Alright, let's do a couple more. This time when we have percentage information, we just turn the percents into grams and then go through the same process. So 69.9 grams of iron and 30.1 grams of oxygen. One mole of iron, the molar mass of iron is, well, let's see, there it is, 55.85. Hey, 56 is close enough. For this problem. Okay. Oxygen's always 16. So when we cancel out, we get values for moles. What are those? 69.9 divided by 56 gives me 1.25. Fe. That's the moles. And 30.1 divided by 16 is 1.88 moles of O. Now we have to normalize by dividing by the smallest number. So what do we end up with here? 1 Fe, 1.88 divided by 1.25 is 1.51 oxygens. Okay, and if you notice, that's essentially a ratio of 1 to 1 and a half, which is not the same as 1 to 1 or 1 to 2. It's smack dab in the middle. So when we end up with something at the end that's close to 0.5, we multiply both by 2, which gives us We're multiplying both of these by 2, which gives us 2 Fe's and 2 times 1 and a half is 3 oxygens. So how do we write a formula for the compound with 2 Fe's and 3 oxygens? It's Fe2O3, and that's the ratio, and that's the empirical formula. Piece of cake, right? Absolutely. All right, one more to go. They want to know the molecular formula of a compound with this molar mass and those percentages. So the first thing we need to do, if we want the molecular formula, is find the empirical formula. We've already done those kinds of problems. So let's buzz through that. We've already changed the percentage signs to grams. Now we're going to convert to moles using the periodic table and the molar masses. Hopefully you've done enough problems that you don't even have to look for nitrogen. You know it's right around 14 and oxygen's right around 16. So let's see what those ratios are. 30.4 divided by 14 is 2.17 moles of nitrogen, 69.6 divided by 16, is 4.35 moles of oxygen. Divide by the smallest one. Always going to have a 1 associated with one of them. Okay, that's 2. Okay, so we have NO2 is our empirical formula. But remember, the molecular formula is sort of some ratio of this. And it has a molar mass of 140 grams per mole. So how do we go about doing that? Well, this is what I like to do. NO2. The ratio 
ratio times 1 the molecular formula would be NO2 and the molar mass would be what? molar mass would be 14 plus 32 46 grams per mole okay well what if we took NO2 and the ratio was two of them that would be N2O4 wouldn't it and N2O4 has a molar mass of 92 and we can keep going here N3 O6 and that molar mass is 138 as you can see we're going to figure out all the possible ratios all the possible molecular formulas and this can go on forever and ever but our key here is try to find one that matches up with our actual molar mass and as you can see those are the closest 140 grams per mole is what we calculated in our problem or we measured and then this is what we would get if we calculated it those are the closest so the molecular formula would be N3O6 okay that's it that's how we do this problem good luck do a bunch of them on your own we're talking about exercises 8C, 8D, and 8E